The Commonwealth of Massachusetts versus Lizzie A. Borden. A dramatic reading of the full trial transcript. Day 4, 1893. New Bedford, Massachusetts. Chief Justice Mason and Justices Blodgett and Dewey presided. The state was represented by the Honorable Hosea M. Knowlton, District Attorney of the Southern District, and William H. Moody, District Attorney of the Eastern District. The defendant, Miss Borden, was represented by the Honorable George D. Robinson, the Honorable Andrew J. Jennings, and Melvin O. Adams, Esquire. Part 4. The prosecution calls its next witness, Mr. John Cunningham. Mr. Cunningham is sworn in and takes the witness stand. Direct examination of the witness by Mr. Moody of the prosecution. What is your full name, sir? J. Cunningham. Well, what does the J stand for? John. You are a news dealer in Fall River, are you? Yes, sir. You recall the morning of August 4th, 1892? Yes, sir. On that morning, had you any occasion to be on 2nd Street? Yes, sir. What first attracted your attention to anything unusual on 2nd Street? Well, as I was going up 2nd Street... What attracted my attention was Mrs. Churchill running across the street. From where to where did she run? Well, I should think from where she started from was from the Borden residence. She run triangular across the street to... Diagonally, perhaps you mean? Diagonally, yes. Across the street to an office there of Mr. Hall's. To the place that is called Hall's Stable? Yes, sir. Well, then what happened when you saw her do that? I continued on my walk up that side of the street of the Borden house. How far were you from the Borden house when you saw Mrs. Churchill run across from the house to Hall's Stable? I was opposite Mr. Hall's Stable. On the opposite side. On the same side as the Borden house you were? Yes, sir. How far did you go up? As far as Varney Wade's store. And is that store the next building above Dr. Kelly's? Yes, sir. That is, Dr. Kelly's house stands between the Borden house and this store that you spoke of? Yes, sir. What did you do there? Well, uh, my business was collecting the money for newspapers. And how much did you collect? Twelve cents. Just the weekly payment? Yes, sir. Did you delay there at all? Oh, a few seconds. What did you then do? I went on the opposite side of the street to Mr. Gray's paint shop. That is, on the corner of Spring Street? Yes, sir. Spring and Second. Did you collect something there? Yes, sir. How much? Same amount. Did you delay there at all? About the same time. Then where did you go? Came down on the same side of the street as Mr. Gray's paint shop. Did you see anything before you reached Hall's stable again? Well, I see Mrs. Churchill. Where was she? She was uh, standing on the sidewalk talking to two or three gentlemen that was in front of Mr. Hall's office. Did she leave there before you came or not? Before I came from where? Uh, before you got back to Mr. Hall's, had Mrs. Churchill turned and gone back again? No, sir. She was still there when you got there? Yes, sir. Now, without asking what she said in detail, did you learn from what she said that there was some trouble in the Borden house? I learned it from another party. Uh, yes, sir. While she was there, was it? Yes, sir. Someone else in her presence? Yes, sir. In consequence of learning that, what did you do? Or after learning it, what did you do? There is a paint shop on the corner of Borden and Second Streets. That is Mr. Gorman's paint shop. I went in there and I asked for the use of his telephone. Did you telephone? To the city marshal. Uh, did you know the city marshal, know his voice? Yes, sir. Do you know who responded to your telephone? The marshal himself. Marshal Hilliard? Yes, sir. What did you telephone to? I telephoned to the central police station. Uh, what information did you give him? Uh, this is simply to connect it. I object to any communications. I don't know anything about them at all. It is foreign to us. Well, I don't care to press it. I will ask you, was it uh, with reference to the Borden house, without asking you what? That there had been a stabbing affair? Wait. Oh, was it with reference to some event at the Borden house? Yes, sir. Did you look at the clock that was over the telephone at the paint shop? I did, sir. I submit that is very leading. You are trying to fix an important time, I suppose. No, I don't expect to fix any time. I just want to show a fact. Will you state if you ascertain the time in any way as you telephoned? I ascertained the time by the time uh, the clock was over the telephone. What time did the clock over the telephone show? It showed ten minutes to eleven. Ten minutes of eleven? Yes, sir. You know nothing about that clock, I suppose. Only that I've heard since. After telephoning to the marshal, what did you do? Went out and stood at the corner of the building, at the corner of 2nd and Borden Streets. I would like to show these places on this plan that have been referred to. 
The direct examination of John Cunningham is suspended as the court recesses for lunch. Afternoon session. The court came in at 2.15. Mr. Moody resumes the direct examination of the witness. At the adjournment, Mr. Cunningham, uh, you had told us that after telephoning, you went across to the other corner of Borden Street. Yes, sir. The west corner of Borden and 2nd Street. The east. The corner towards Miss Russell's house? Yes, sir. Did you do anything there before you saw anyone else, or did you see anyone? Yes, sir. Whom did you see while standing at that door? I saw Dr. Bowen. Where did he go? And where did you see him? He drove up 2nd Street in his team. Did you see anyone else? Yes, sir. Whom? Miss Russell and Miss Sullivan. Where were they and where did they go to? Do you mean where were they coming from? Yes. They were coming over Borden Street from the house where Miss Russell was. And thence where did they go? Went up 2nd Street to the Borden house. What did you do then? I crossed over to the west corner to Gorman's paint shop. A telephone to some other persons, did you? Yes, sir. Telephone to the Fall River Daily Globe. Anyone else? Telephone to the Fall River Daily News. Whom did you next see? Officer Allen. Where was he when you saw him? Coming up 2nd Street. From which direction? The police station. Did you have any conversation with him? I don't ask you what was said. I did, yes sir. After you had the conversation, where did he go? He went to the Borden house. At any time did you go to the Borden house? Yes sir. How soon after Officer Allen had gone? Oh, a couple of minutes afterwards. Did you go into the premises? Yes, sir. Did anyone go in with you? Yes, sir. Who went with you? Mr. Manning and Mr. Stevens. Are they reporters of two different papers in Fall River? Yes, sir. One from the Globe, the other from the News. Describe what you did after you got into the Borden premises. I walked up to the front of the house, past the front gate, and jumped over the front fence, and the other two gentlemen followed me. Go on, and describe what you did then. We went round the south side of the house that is, near Dr. Kelly's, went in between the Borden house and the doctor's house in the yard. What was the character of the ground there? Well, we noticed that there were no footprints in the grass, and the grass was a little deep, and we looked round through the grass thinking we might find something, which we did not. Where did you then go? Round the back part of the house. What did you do at the back part of the house? Looked round the back part of the yard. Did you see anything? Did not, no sir. Did you do anything else? In the back part of the house? Uh, yes, what did you do? Tried the cellar door. How was it? It was locked. What did you then do? Well, we continued looking through the yard there for a few minutes and did not see anything out of the way and went round the same way we started from. Did you go into the house at all? No, sir, I did not. While you were there, did you see any officers come there? Yes, sir. Now, independent of the clock that you saw in the paint shop, did you see any timepiece at or about the time of this alarm? Or, or before it? No, sir. Did you try any other doors except the cellar door? No, sir. I have not the picture here, but will you describe the cellar door that you tried? Where was it? From what part of the house did it lead? It led into the cellar. From what side of the house? Uh, the back part of the house. The back part of the house? Yes, sir. Mr. Moody completes the direct examination of the witness. Cross-examination of the witness by Mr. Robinson of the defense. As I understand it, Mr. Cunningham, you came up on the east side of 2nd Street on the walk-in from the Borden house, you said. Is that right? Yes, sir. That is right. But that is on the same side as the Borden house and the Churchill house walking on that sidewalk. Yes, sir. Before that, you had been over at Hall's Stable, which is across the street, a little uh, lower down? No, sir. You said you spoke to somebody. Where was it? You mean when I first came up 2nd Street? Yes. I came from Borden Street from the house where Miss Russell was. I came over Borden Street and up 2nd Street on the Borden House side. Where were you when you saw Dr. Bowen drive up and saw Ms. Russell and Ms. Sullivan? Standing on the corner of Borden and 2nd Streets. Borden Street is down lower, down the hill? Yes, sir. Next corner below the Borden House? Yes, sir. And they three went on and turned into the Borden Yard, didn't they? Not together, they didn't. No, but at different times. I couldn't say about Dr. Bowen going direct in the house when he got there because I did not pay attention as to where his team stopped. Then you really don't know about that? No, sir. Were you alone as you walked up that walk? Yes, sir. Where did you find Mr. Manning and Mr. Stevens? They followed my message. They came from the different offices. They were not there at first? No, sir. But came as soon as they could, probably in a few minutes, and joined you where? On 2nd Street. I understood you to say you jumped over the fence? Yes, sir. What fence? The fence in front of the boarding house. What part of it? The front gate led into the front door. On the other side of that. Did you try to get in through the gate? In the front gate? Uh, no, sir. You preferred to jump the fence? 
so that if there was anyone on the side of the house, they could not see us. Could not they see you if you went in the front gate? There was a gentleman standing along the side of the house, and we did not want to let him see us going over that way. Who was it? Mr. Sire. Where did he stand? On the side of the house. On the north side of the house. He stood by the side door. Yes, sir. Now, Mr. Cunningham, if you walked on the second street sidewalk and got to the front gate, you could have opened that and walked right in, and Mr. Sawyer could not have seen you. If we had the presence of mind to open that gate, we could. But in the hurry, we did not think of it. You lost your presence of mind? In the hurry to get in there. And the easiest way was not to open the gate, but to spring over the fence. It was a low fence. Did the other gentlemen follow with the same agility that you did? I don't know. Did they get there the same time you did? I could not say that. I did not notice. When did you see them? Well, three of us stood in the yard at the same time before we made the attempt to get into the side yard. Did you jump by putting your hand on the side of the fence and springing over? Yes, sir. Right over with a sweep. Did not climb over? No, sir. It was quite a hop. How high is the fence? I could not say. That front fence? Yes, sir. Jumped from the sidewalk over into the yard. Got hold of the fence this way and jumped right over. You did not have any difficulty? No, sir. A man could jump from outside the fence about the same. You say that was a grass plot all around there running way back to the pear trees? Yes, sir. You saw the pear trees? Yes, sir. Did you see any marks of footsteps around the pear trees? No, sir. Did not? No, sir. Didn't look for any? No, sir. Why not? Didn't see any marks of anyone traveling there? No, sir. Not a bit? No, sir. Did you look along the grass by the Kelly fence to see if there were any marks of any passing through that grass? Yes, sir. Did not see any? No, sir. Did you know Bridget walked across the grass along that plot that morning to see if she could see anything there? No, sir. Did not know anything of that? No, sir. Did not know anything of her or the man, John Morse? Being in that yard? No, sir. You could not see anything in the grass which would indicate that any person had been through there? No, sir. Did you look very carefully? Yes, sir. You were really hunting for the criminal, weren't you? Yes, sir. You say you saw officers coming there? Yes, sir. Who? What officers? Name them. Uh, Officer Allen was one. Well? Officer Mullally was another. That's two. Uh, Officer Doherty? Three. Go on. I don't remember of seeing any other... Officer Fleet. Anybody else? And I see Sheriff Wixon. Anybody else? I don't remember anybody else. You went around to the backyard? Yes, sir. Did you go in the barn? Yes, sir. Was the barn door open? I didn't notice. Couldn't say now whether it was or not? No, sir. See anybody go in the barn? Not while I was there, no, sir. How long did you stay on the premises? Well, uh, about eight or ten minutes. You didn't go in the house at all? No, sir. And Mr. Sawyer was there at the side door? Yes, sir. And did he remain there as long as you stayed, or don't you know? Yes, sir. You came out the same way you went in? Yes, sir. Jump the fence again? Yes, sir. Mr. Robinson completes the cross-examination of the witness. Mr. Cunningham is excused. The prosecution calls its next witness, Mr. George W. Allen. Mr. Allen is sworn in and takes the witness stand. Direct examination of George Allen by Mr. Moody of the prosecution. What is your full name, sir? George W. Allen. And you are a police officer in Fall River? Yes, sir. And have been how many years? Five years. On the regular force, are you? Yes, sir. In 1892 and in August of that year, what was your duty? Committing officer. That is, you took those who had been committed by the district court at Fall River and conveyed them to the place of confinement. Yes, sir. Did you have a regular time each day for that duty? Yes, sir. And what time was that? At half past eleven and quarter past three. Do you remember August 4th, 1892, in the morning of that day? Yes, sir. Where were you between eleven and a quarter past eleven? Quarter past eleven, the marshal came to me and said that there was a row up on Second Street. Without stating what he said to you, did you receive receive a direction from Marshal Hilliard to go to the Borden house. I did. Where did the marshal come from? Came from his office. And was his office at that time in the central police station? Yes, sir. Uh, where were you sitting when he came and addressed you? At the guardroom door. How was that situated with reference to the office? Right in front of the office, at the side. In which room is the telephone? In his office. Now, did you have any occasion to look at your watch? Yes, sir. It being quarter past eleven, I looked at the clock. 
so that I would see if I had time to commit my prisoners at half past eleven. And what time was it when you received this direction? Quarter past. And that was by what time? The clock? The clock, yes, sir. The clock in the station? Clock in the guardroom. In consequence of that direction, where did you go? I went directly to Second Street, up to the Borden House. Do you recall whether you consulted anything except a clock as to the time? No, sir. You had a watch, did you? I did. How far is it from the station, or how many minutes walk up to it? Four minutes it took me. Because I've tried it since. Did you walk or... Went partly on the run. When you got to the Borden house, did you see anyone there? I took Mr. Sawyer on the way to the Borden house and told him to stand after we went in and I saw Mr. Borden. I told him to stand at the door and not allow anyone in or out but an officer. Well, which door did you enter? Entered the side door. Whom did you see as you entered or after you entered? After I went into the kitchen, I saw Miss Lizzie Borden. And she was in the kitchen? Uh, sitting at the table, I think. Was anyone else there at the time? There was not. Did you see any other persons there? After I went into the sitting room where Mr. Borden was, there was two ladies came to the door that opens from the kitchen into the sitting room. And who were those two ladies, if you know? I think Miss Churchill and Miss Russell? Did you see anyone else there at that time? I saw at one time Miss Lizzie Borden and Miss Russell and Miss Churchill in the dining room on the lounge. Did you see Dr. Bowen there at that time? I did. Where was Dr. Bowen? He met me at the door. As you came in, you mean? Yes, sir. Did you go anywhere before you went back to the office? Only into the front entry. Did you see Mr. Borden at that time? Yes, I went in there. On the way to your front entry? Yes, sir. Where was he then? He was lying on the sofa side of the door that opens from the dining room to the kitchen. Was there a sheet over him at that time or not? No, sir. Did you see a sheet there? I did not. Dr. Bowen said he sent for one. Then where did you go as you went through the sitting room? I went to the front door, front hall. Describe exactly what you did at the front hall. I looked at the door and the door was locked with a night lock and also a bolt, bolted. In any other way, did you notice? No, sir. There was a lock under the knob, but I don't know whether that was locked or not. But the night lock was locked? Yes, sir. And the bolt was locked? Yes, sir. Did you interfere with the door at all? No, sir. After you examined this front door, what did you do? I looked behind the door to see if anyone was standing there, and then I came out and I told the doctor I would go down and get some officers up here to investigate the case. Well, did you go? I did. Went where? When I went out of the dining room, I saw a closet there. And I thought I would look into the closet, and then I looked in the clothes press that was nigh the stove. In the dining room? No, in the kitchen. In the kitchen? Yes, sir. Did you make any other investigation before you left the house? No, sir. I started, and then I told Mr. Sawyer to stay here until I came back. At that time, did you learn anything about Mrs. Borden the first time? No, sir. You say you went again to the station, did you? Uh, I went to the station, direct. And had some conversation with anyone? With the marshal. Where did you then go? To the barn. Patrol burn for Mr. Mullally. Did you find him? Yes, sir. What did you do then? I took him right up to the Borden house. Did anyone else go with you? No, sir. Where is this patrol house which you went to? It's on Rock Street. It's the second street from what we call Court Square. Well, how far from the central police station? I should think it was about 800 feet. I don't know, but it might be a little further. In going that 800 feet, did you go further away from the Borden house than the police station? Yes, sir. So that your journey was longer? Yes, sir. Did you return to the Borden house? I did. You and Mr. Mullally? Yes, sir. When you arrived there, did you see anyone? I saw Officer Doherty and Mr. Wixon there. Anyone else? That's all I saw then. Where did you go? Into what? I went up in the room where Miss Borden lay. Did you go anywhere else before you went up there, up to Mrs. Borden's room? I went through the dining room, through the sitting room, and up the stairs. Who went up with you? I went up with Mr. Mullally up there. Did you see anyone up there? I saw Mrs. Borden when I got up the stairs. You could look under the bed and see her. And how far up the stairs were you when you got sight of Mrs. Borden's body? Well, just as I could get a look on the level. Had you been informed that something had happened to her? The doctor said how he thought she was up there dead by the looks of things. Did he go up? Yes, he went up. Well, what occurred after you went up? Mr. Morse came there. The doctor and Mr. Mullally and Mr. Doherty... And Mr. Wixon and me was up there. Was anything said by Dr. Bowen there? No, I think not. He was taking a hold of her when I saw her to turn her over. I object to that.
Now, did you make any observation at that time of Mrs. Borden as to the condition of her blood or anything of that sort? No, sir. Where did you then go? I went down, met with Mr. Morse at uh, the head of the stairs, and uh, entering the room. Did you go anywhere else in the house while you were there? No, sir. I went downstairs, and Mr. Porter told me... Uh, wait a minute. Don't tell us what anyone said. Did you go into the cellar at any time? Yes, sir. I went down to the cellar. When did you go into the cellar? I went... Down cellar when they told me the marshal wanted me. Just before you left the second time, you mean? Just before I left, yes, sir. What observation did you make in the cellar? Well, I saw Mr. Molly pull some clothes out of a tub and looked at a door without a lock. The door was bolted, then? The door was bolted. You saw it? Uh, yes, sir, an iron bolt. This was the cellar door you're talking about? Yes, sir. Tell us exactly which cellar door you mean. It was back inside, the door going just to the side door. There's a door that goes up stairs, and then there's a door to go down to the cellar. Will you point out the door that you saw? The door's in the house. Uh, as you go in the side door, you go down underneath the stairs to go up. Do you mean the door leading out inside the house? Yes, sir. Yeah, my question is intended to refer... Uh, did you take any notice of the door that led from the cellar out into the yard. Yes, sir, it was bolted inside. The door that led from the cellar out into the yard. Yes, sir. Did you make any observation of either of the bodies, uh, any except just to look at them? Uh, only to look at them, that is all. At this time, did you see the prisoner at all there in the house? I saw who? Uh, Miss Lizzie Borden. Yes, I saw her in the house. What was her appearance and manner as far as you saw? Was there any tears or anything of that sort? Uh, no, sir. Did you notice anything about the sofa? And the furniture about the sofa, on the first time that you went into the sitting room. I noticed how Mr. Borden sat on the sofa, or laid on the sofa at least. Will you take that photograph and tell me if you noticed anything else? I noticed the shoes were on. I noticed how small the ankles were for the shoes. Will anything else? I noticed the face was badly cut. I'm not speaking now with reference to anything about him. But to any piece of furniture. I noticed a stand with two books on it, standing nigh the sofa. Describe where that was, standing by the sofa. I should think it was standing about three feet from Mr. Borden's sofa, where the head was. Three feet in which direction? In front of him, and there was a table over across the room by the two windows. Can you tell in that photograph that table that you saw standing there? There was the table. Uh, will you point out with that pen holder where the table was? Uh, about here. Did you notice what the color of those books was? No, sir. Did you notice whether there was anything on the books or on the table, any marks of any sort of fluid? No, sir, there was not. Then I will ask you the direct question if there was any splattering of blood upon the books or table. No, sir. Did you notice any article about the room anywhere near Mrs. Borden? I noticed a handkerchief covered in blood. Can you tell us where that was? It was lying from Mrs. Borden's feet toward the window. Could you identify it, do you think? Yes, sir, the border is cut. A ragged handkerchief was shown to the witness. Yes, that is the handkerchief. We offer this, your honors, please. State, if you can do so, the position of that handkerchief as it lay on the floor in reference to the window and the woman's feet, that is, which was nearer. It was lying about the same distance, I should think, from the windows as was her feet, about middle way. That is, about as far from the handkerchief to the window as from the handkerchief to the feet. Yes, sir, it was wet in blood and lying in, uh, just as you have it now. Mr. Moody completes the direct examination of the witness. Cross-examination of the witness by Mr. Robinson of the defense. There isn't much doubt, but your time at the station was correct at that time? It was correct, yes, sir. Of course, you are careful to keep your time correct. Yes, sir. 11.15, you received the message? Yes, sir. And how far is the police station where you started from to the Borden house? Well, it's quite a little distance from the police station. It's about a four-minute walk. That's going fast. I should think it would take... One, five or six minutes to go up there. Probably then you got there somewhere between 20 and 25 minutes past 11? I got there about, I should think, less than 20 minutes past. Well, you didn't leave. I left the police station at quarter past, and just as I went out the door. And you think you made the distance in about five minutes? Four minutes. And where did you find Mr. Sawyer? I found Mr. Sawyer about 400 feet from the boarding house. On 2nd Street? Yes, sir. And took him along with you? Yes, sir. And when you got there, you went right into the side door? Yes, sir. And it wasn't locked? 
It wasn't locked. Was anyone on the outside of the door then? No, sir. See anybody about the yard? I never saw no one on the street nor near the yard. The man sent the message down by telephone. That is Mr. Cunningham? Yes, sir. And saw nobody as you went in that yard, the rear part of the yard? No, sir. And then did you and Mr. Sawyer both go in together? We went in and I saw Mr. Borden. And then Mr. Sawyer was out on the door for guard. Did you go upstairs then? I did not. You left Mr. Sawyer there and went back down to the station. I went to the front door. And then went down to the station. Yes, sir. And then on 800 feet further to the patrol station. Yes, sir. And then back again with Mr. Mullally. Yes, sir. Now, how much time did that consume? Well, the way we walked in, it didn't take us more than six or seven minutes, probably. What, to do the whole of it? Well, I think it was about half past or 25 minutes to 12 when Mr. Mullally and me got there. And you found Mr. Sawyer at the side door? Yes, sir. In the house, when you first went, you saw Miss Lizzie and nobody else? I did not. When did you see the two ladies? When I was uh, viewing Mr. Borden the first time, they came to the door that opens from the kitchen. Did you see Miss Sullivan at that time? No, sir. At any time? No, sir. The doctor says she had gone up. Hold on. Wait a moment. I asked you if you saw her. Yes. You and Mr. Mullally came up alone? Yes, sir. How soon before Mr. Doherty got there? He got there just before we did. And Mr. Wixon? Wixon was in the police station when I reported to the marshal, and he went right up there. You practically got there together? Yes, sir. Who else were there when you arrived the second time? Uh, that is all. Nobody else there? No, sir, but the doctor. And so as far as you saw, nobody in the yard? No, sir, there was some few people had gathered outside in the road. You spoke of seeing Mr. Cunningham... Uh, that was after this time of going there? Mr. Cunningham had reported down, and I met him going up for the first time. Did you see him over at the south side of the Borden house there? No, sir. On the outside at all? No, sir. And did you see anything of Mr. Manning or Mr. Stevens there? I saw Mr. Manning. Was that the second time? Yes, sir. And Mr. Stevens? Yes, sir. They were together? Yes, sir. This table, was it a small stand? Yes, sir. A marble top table? Uh, no, sir, I think not. Did it have a cloth on it? I think it did, some kind of cloth. And a few books? Yes, sir. And you didn't notice anything about them? Uh, no, sir. Was it near the middle of the room? Not quite, nearer to the sofa than it was near. Well, there was nothing unusual about that? Uh, no, sir. And was it moved away from its place? while you were there? Uh, no, sir. There was nothing out of place, as I should take it. You don't get my idea. Was the table moved? No, sir. While you were there? No, sir. And set aside? No, sir. The picture does not show the table in its proper position? No, sir. And what time was it when you went away from the house? Uh, when the first time? No, sir. Finally. Well, I went away about... I think it was somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 minutes to 12 when I went from there. The second time? Yes, sir. Mr. Robinson completes the cross-examination of the witness. Mr. Allen is excused. Prosecution calls its next witness, Mr. Francis H. Wixon. Mr. Wixon is sworn in and takes the witness stand. Direct examination of the witness by Mr. Moody of the prosecution. Francis H. Wixon is your name? Yes, sir. And you are the deputy sheriff? Yes, sir. Of this county? Yes, sir. And have been for some time? Uh, 21 or 22 years. Do you recall Thursday, August 4th, 1892, the day of the homicide? Yes, sir. On that day, were you at the Central Police Station? I was. Can you tell me about what time you got to the station? Very near it. Well, state about what time you got to the station. About one minute past 11 o'clock. Had you had to consult a timepiece before that, or had you seen a timepiece? Oh, I heard the bell on the city building ringing as I was turning the corner going up the marshal's office. I should judge the distance was about 80 feet. When you got to the marshal's office, what did you go to doing? Did you go to doing anything when you got to the marshal's office? I merely went in to make a friendly call, as I frequently did. No particular business. Where were you sitting? Outside the rail in his office. In his office? In his office, yes, sir. Do you recall his being called on the telephone at any time? I do, very shortly after I went in. Could you give me an estimate of about how long it was after you went in? Well, I shouldn't think it was more than 10 or 15 minutes. Did he go to the telephone? I thought he did. He went somewhere and went to talk him. I don't ask you what he said. I don't know what he said. I didn't pay any attention. After he had been to the telephone, what did you see him do? He came out and went by me, gave some orders to somebody. Do you know who it was? I didn't at the time. You didn't see who it was? No, sir. I was back. Did you have any talk with him? I did. Uh, talk about what? About any occurrence. 
After he got the telephone, did he communicate anything to you? Why, yes. Uh, he said... He said something, did he? Oh, yes. He came back and resumed the conversation that we were talking on. How long after that did you remain at the station? I remained until Officer Allen came in. And was there any conversation between Officer Allen and the Marshal in your presence? I don't know whether there was or not. If there was, I didn't hear it. It wasn't any of my business to listen. I didn't pay any attention. There was another man there at the time, and I was talking to him. How long after that, after Officer Allen came back, how long did you remain at the station? Just long enough to learn what had taken place. Where did you go then? I went out and stepped into Swift and Grimes' office just a moment to impart the news, then repaired to the boarding house. Where did Officer Allen go as you went toward the boarding house? I let him in the marshal's office. You don't know where he went? No, sir, I do not. Did you walk to the boarding house? I did. Alone or with someone? I walked partway alone and was overtaken by Officer Doherty. He and I went to the house together, went in together. Did you mark the time when you arrived there? I did not. Only as best as my memory serves. Well, as your memory best serves, what time do you think it was that you and Officer Doherty arrived at the house? I should think about 25 minutes, 12. Might have been a trifle earlier or a trifle later. Had Officer Allen returned to the house at that time? Was he there when you and uh, Doherty got there? I didn't see him. I didn't see Officer Allen after I left the marshal's office when he came and imparted the news. What did you do after you got to the board and premises? Went into the house. Which door? The back door. Was there anyone there at the back door? Yes, sir. Who? Mr. Sawyer. What did you do then? Went into the sitting room. No, uh, yes, I was, I was in the sitting room leading from the kitchen on the south side of the house, the room that Mr. Borden was in. At that time, was there any covering over Mr. Borden? There was. What I took to be a sheet or white cloth or something like that. Now, go on and tell us all you did and all you observed with reference to Mr. Borden's body. Or, before that, I want to ask you, Mr. Wixon, have you been anywhere where you have had the occasion to see wounds, fresh or otherwise? I have seen some. Where was that experience gained? Well, most of the time I saw on Roanoke Island in war times, right after the engagement of the armies there. Now, will you go on to give a description of what you saw of Mr. Borden? I saw him lying upon the sofa with the wounds on his face, on the left side of the face. Several. I, I don't know how many. Can you give any further description of his appearance, or the appearance of the blood, or anything about that? Well, they look to me like quite fresh wounds. Can you give any description of the blood besides saying it looked fresh? Bright color, the same as I had seen in army wounds. How was it with reference to thickness? I didn't see any thick blood on his face. I, I only saw his face. Had it coagulated at all? I didn't see any. After you had observed Mr. Borden and the blood upon his face, where did you go? I went upstairs with Dr. Bowen. A what examination, if any, did you make of the body of Mrs. Borden? Of the wounds of Mrs. Borden? Very slight. Officer Dordery and I went up together on the invitation of Dr. Bowen. Did you notice anything with reference to the blood? I did. If you examined that, state what the appearance of the blood was. The blood was very dark and coagulated. Whereabouts was this blood, which was dark and coagulated? Under the face. She lay upon the floor, face down. How did its color in darkness or brightness compare with that of Mr. Borden's? Oh, it was very dark. I should think it looked to me as though it was dark maroon color. How did its thickness and clotting compare with that of Mr. Borden's? Well, I say I didn't see any thick blood on Mr. Borden at the time, but this, it seemed, well, it looked as though it was thick. I didn't test it. It looked as though there was a considerable on the floor that had thickened up. Was there anything else you observed at the time where there was a difference between the two? Anything with reference to color? I didn't see much of the color. I, I didn't look long enough. You needn't answer this question, Mr. Wixon, if you please, uh, until passed on by the court. Did you form an opinion at that time as to which of the two had come to their death first? I object to that. I thought we would at least submit it to your honor's consideration. I think I won't uh, insist upon the objection. He may answer it. It is excluded. Uh, I don't know that your honor knew that the objection was withdrawn. I understood it to be insisted upon. Your Honor did not hear me. I said I would withdraw my objection, and he might answer it. If the objection is withdrawn, it may be answered. I understood you to insist upon the objection. 
No, Your Honor misunderstood me, but I want to say that I do not suppose it will be followed up by any attempt at expert knowledge on the part of the w- this witness. Not as to the relative length of time. Did you form such an opinion? No, sir, I did not. I don't consider myself competent. I forgot to ask you about going into the yard. In the Borden yard? Yes. At the time? Well, at any time in the morning. I went from the house out into the yard, uh, easterly, toward what I've learned since is known as Dr. Shunyan's fence. At the time I was asked before, I I didn't know whose fence it was. Tell us what you did out there. I walked a considerable distance from the house out into the yard. Uh, This plan may aid you, or or may not. I am familiar with the places. Uh, Very well. I walked in an easterly direction towards Dr. Shenyan's yard, and I got a considerable distance, and for some reason, I don't know what, I looked south and saw the movement of a hat. Subsequently, I learned that under the hat was a man. I went east and got on a pile of lumber that was near the fence dividing the Borden yard and Dr. Shenyan's yard. I got on that fence from the lumber, stepped on the stringer of the fence, which was probably about 18 inches below the top of the fence, and worked myself along. I got my hands considerably pricked from time to time with the barbed wire that was on the fence, and got onto the fence dividing the crow yard and the Borden yard running the south line of the Borden yard. I got on that fence, worked myself a little to the west, and got over a pile of lumber in the crow yard. Got over the fence? Yes, sir. Then I went to see this hat that I saw moving and and found a man. What was he doing? Sawing wood. Now, have you since learned what the man's name is? I have heard the name, but I cannot... Uh, De Rosier, is it? I couldn't say. Was he a Frenchman? I should judge he was. I determined that at the time. Did you go anywhere else or see anyone else over in that crow yard at the time? Over in the easterly part of the yard, there were two men beside this man sawing wood. What were those two men doing? Well, I don't know really. They were at work at something. They had working clothes on, and they evidently had been doing something. I was trying to talk to the man sawing wood. He couldn't understand me, nor I him. Finally, one of the two men that was near the easterly end of the crow yard on the third street that would be came over and asked me what was the matter. Well, I don't care for the conversation. You had some talk with him. Yes, sir. Do you know who that man was? No, sir, I do not. I never saw him before, to my knowledge. Do you think you could point out by that plan about where that man was that was sawing wood? Well, this man was very near on the line here. Possibly he may have been a trifle further. Possibly the man might have been a little far off the south line, a little further that way. Put the pencil about where you think it is. Uh, Make a little mark. I should think it was more than... Where the man stood. He could look right out on 3rd Street. Where did you get over the fence? There's the lumber here. I should judge the south end of the lumber probably four feet from the Kelly fence. There was a stringer on this fence and barbed wire on top. I got on the lumber and on the fence and then worked my way step by step until I got here. The witness says that he came out into the Borden backyard to the fence, running between the Chagnon yard and the Borden yard. He went along the fence, got to the corner on the lumber pile there, went along here, and saw a man sawing wood out at that place indicated by the mark of the pencil, a little to the south of the line of the shed. Did you know either of the two men you saw there? I never saw them before, to my knowledge. You told us you saw the wood sawyer afterwards, in court. I saw him in court. Yes, sir. I was not positive that he was the man, but he resembled him very much. Mr. Moody completes the direct examination of the witness. Cross-examination of the witness by Mr. Robinson of the defense. I think I asked you some time ago if you got there about 35 minutes past 11 to the house. I said it might be a trifle later, a trifle earlier. It was near that time as my memory serves me. Will you tell me again, Mr. Sawyer was there? I saw him. Was he there at the side door? He was in the side entry. What other persons did you see? In the yard? No, sir, in the house first. I saw Dr. Bowen, and he went upstairs when I went in with Officer Doherty. And then you went upstairs? Yes, sir. Did you see any ladies at all? I did when I came down. Whom did you see then? I saw Miss Bridget Sullivan. I was told that it was her afterwards and Mrs. Churchill. Did you see Miss Lizzie? I did not. I was informed by Dr. Bowen. No matter about that. Did you see Mrs. Dr. Bowen? I don't remember whether I did or not. And Ms. Russell? 
I would not like to be positive, but I think I did. Did you see any other officers in the house? When I came from upstairs, I did. And who were they? I'm sure I saw Officer Mullally, because I spoke to him and another officer. I'm not positive as to who he was. You think you saw Mr. Mullally in the house? When I came from upstairs, yes, sir, n not when I was first there. Refreshing your recollection, is it not a fact that when you came down, Officer Doherty was the only one, but before you went away, Officer Malalia and Officer Harrington came? I think I saw Officer Harrington and Malali. They came later? They were not there when I went in, but when I came downstairs, I saw Officer Malali and Bridget and Miss... Mr. Witness, did you testify at the other trial over in the district court? I did. Is this the testimony? You have only spoken of one police officer being there? Answer, Mr. Doherty was there when we went in. He was the only one there when we came out. Question, there were other people who were in there when you came out? Answer, Officer Malali and Officer Harrington. I don't think they were there when I came out. Is that correct? I don't think I was positive about Harrington. I never was positive about that. I saw him in the afternoon. I saw him during the day. I do not insist on it. You say you saw other people there. Do you mean others besides those ladies and Mr. Sawyer? You say you saw other people there? I don't know what you mean when you say there. Mr. Doherty was there when we went in. He was the only one there when we came out. I said- I beg your pardon. I am reading your testimony at Fall River. I don't think that is proper. Oh no, I was wrong about saying it was the testimony. I did. Did you recall saying this? Mr. Doherty was there when we went in. He was the only one there when we came out. There was other people there. No, sir. I did not give such testimony as that. Very well. We will pass on. You went out in the yard, did you? I did. Yes, sir. And did you go out to the barn? No, sir. I did not. Did you see anybody go to the barn? I don't remember. What time did you go over the fence after going up on the lumber? About what time was that after your first arrival at the house? Over the fence? Which fence? Or on the fence? How many fences did you go over? During the day? No, sir. Right at that time. I only went over one fence at a time. Well, was it that fence that you went over at that time? Let, let us go on in a... Yes, sir, I'm trying to. We are not having any unnecessary work here. I want to find out what time it was that you went over into the crow yard. In the crow yard? Well, it was somewhere before 12 o'clock. You went down to the pile of lumber, if I understand you correctly, in the rear part of the board and yard, east part. Yes, sir. And went up on the lumber and walked along on the fence, the rail of the fence. On the stringer of the fence. You call it a stringer? Yes, sir. You went around until you got about opposite somewhere where that man was at work. I saw that man before I went there. I have not asked you that. I don't want to. You went around on the stringer until you got about opposite where that man was, did you, before you got down? I don't know as it was the opposite of where he was. I went till I found a place where I could get over in safely. Before you had gone around on the stringer, you saw the man's hat, I understood you? I saw the man's hat as soon as I came out of the house, yes, sir. You could not see the man himself? No, sir, not at the time. On account of the height of the fence? Yes, sir, the fence. I, I should think it was some six feet high, probably. Well, you stood there. Any time while you were on the level of the yard, on the ground, you could not see anything except his hat. Do I understand that is so? Well, I saw his head moving up and down. Did you notice whether when you got down over into the crow yard, the man was standing with his back towards you or facing you? Well, he was... He, he didn't seem to be back to me or facing me, but he was rather sideways in a diagonal position. Did he look up, if you noticed, before you reached him? I don't know whether he did or not. You don't know from anything that you could see whether he saw you or not until you came up to him? No, sir. I do not. Well, now, did you get back from the crow yard over into the Borden yard again? I did after dinner. At the time, I went as soon as I got over there and was talking with this man. The 12 o'clock bell struck. Were these other two men in the same yard as the man sawing the wood? Yes, sir, but near 3rd Street, further east. I think you did not point out on the plan where those two men were, did you? When I got into the yard, I don't think I did. I don't want to take much time over this. That is the point you made as the place where the man was sawing wood. Now, can you put your finger on the- Mr. Robinson, if, if you'll just give me an idea where that pile of lumber was situated. Here is the back part of the Borden yard. The pile of lumber is right here. 
Here is the Borden barn. This man was here. Now put your finger on about where the two men were. Well, I, I didn't see the two men till I got out here where I could see the street. Put your finger on where they were. It was pretty well out towards the street. I didn't take any particular notice. Well, here is the barn and here is a closed board fence. I should think they were somewhere out here. Possible they might have been further out. Shall I mark there? I didn't take particular notice where they were. No, it is not very particular. I didn't see those two men until after I saw this man that was sawing wood. I think you can see, gentlemen, all I want to show you now. This is the place marked where the man was sawing wood, and that somewhere about there where the two men were. That being 3rd Street over there. Here is 2nd Street. Here is where the jury went in. They went in through a gate there. They will understand the locality. Then you saw the man. Did you go out with those two men? I started to go that way. Yes, sir. One of them came toward me, or, or both of them. I don't know. One of them did, came to me, and spoke to me. Then from that point, where did you go? I went home. And what time did you come back? Oh, between half past three and four o'clock in the afternoon. I went into the Kelly yard and into the Borden yard, the same way I got over into the Crow yard in the morning. I think you told me that uh, when you came out into the yard from the house, you did not recall that anybody was there. No, I did not say that. What was the fact? I said I didn't know who they were. In the yard? In the yard, yes, sir. There was men there in, with blue clothes, but I was so absorbed in my thoughts that I didn't take any particular notice who they were. And were they all policemen? No, sir, I think not, unless they were in citizen's dress. Mr. Robinson completes the cross-examination of the witness. Mr. Wixon is excused. The Lizzie Borden trial, day four, featured Mark Penny as Hosea Knowlton, Keith Morrison as William H. Moody, Christine Daniels as George Robinson, Ron Newcomb as John Cunningham, Jonathan Collins as George Allen, Kevin McNeil as Francis Wixon. Kevin Morrison as Chief Justice Mason. This production was produced by Lion's Den Theater. Feel free to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm your Day 4 announcer, Denisha Farrell. Stay healthy, stay happy, and stay safe. <laughs>